to the internet, I've been able to get a PS4 and TV in my car. Um, the, to be honest, there was no clear full end-to-end -end, uh, way that people have showed on the internet. So this sort of video is to show what I've done to get the PS4 in the car in a full end-to-end -end way. Um, and also a bit of a thank you for all the input that's on the internet. Anyway, let's go. Um, first thing is just getting some power into the car. So I'm running it off the, my current battery. This is just a Honda Fit 2005, so it doesn't, it's not really uh, built for high electric output or anything. It's just your crappy old Japanese car. But anyway, um, you'll see that this is the wire for the wiring that goes into the car. Um, it's just connected to the current electric circuit that is in the car. So you'll see that um, this, this wire here goes inside the car. And there's also another wire which connects to a negative part of the circuit um, somewhere down there. So what I did was I um, heat, sink, heat shrinked and got this 60 or well, 80, I'm not sure, 60 or 80 amp fuse. Chuck that on, um, it's quite nice and close to the positive side of the um, circuit. And that is just wired with the negative um, wire down into the passenger side of the car. And now you'll see that I just got it from the outside of the car, inside the inside the car through a grommet, which is just um, a little hole that's in between the inside and outside of the car, which is easy to fit wiring through. And got it all connected in, and I got it connected to this uh, model, uh, pure sine wave 600 watt inverter. Um, you could get wattage from 150 wattage up to 3000. But 600 watt is pretty good because about 150 is drawn for the PS4 and another 150 or so, maybe even less for the monitor. So that gives me enough room to play with and it just did the job. You can have the choice of pure sine wave versus modified sine wave. Um, pure sine wave is good for like a steady flow and it's more expensive. But I think it's definitely worth it for a PS4 because it's just, you know, nice and safe. If you're just using it for like a laptop charger or like, you know, charging, you could get away with just a modified sine wave. But pure sine wave is the what I needed for the job. And so I've got, um, I haven't mounted it anywhere yet, but um, I can control it being on or off just at the switch here. And then I plug in my plugs for uh, PS4 and monitor. And I've just got the plugs running underneath the passenger seat. So if you follow back here, So I've got the wires underneath the seat coming into the back seat and the next thing is, is how the heck do you mount a TV into a car and how you do that cheaply and safely. So one of the things that was a requirement for me is the rear view, uh, rear view vision mirror is unimpeded um, so you have no, the driver is not affected by having the setup whatsoever except maybe some loud passengers. Um, and then another thing is, was safety like I don't want any metal poles in my car just because it could be a issue if, if there was a crash it could potentially hurt someone. So what I managed to do was just get some rope and this worked perfectly. Um, I have the TV resting um, on it from a mount on the back of the monitor just like a standard wall mount resting on this so it's just balancing on that and then to stop it fall, falling forward, I've just got a clasp at the top. So if we just chuck it on, have the wall mount resting on those bottom ropes, and then, oh, turn it on, and then have it stopping from falling forward, as well as having it quite tight at the top. So you'll see that it's actually quite sturdy. It can, um, if there's any sort of rumbling in the car, like this. Uh, absorbs it and like you know it, it's not shaky or anything it, it, it's it's pretty sturdy um, I've just got the PS4 here some people prefer the PS4 at the back in the boot or anything but I prefer it just having it here press for preference and um, got HDMI cable nice and safely into the TV and if I turn it on hopefully it works
Uh, some issues that I do have is that the controllers seem to not uh, get charged that well while um, plugged in. So it, it, it works if you put it through the, um, the car adapter USB port, like at, at the front there. But preferably just have them like fully charged. Like these things last ages. And me and my mates, we've got like six controllers to share. So it's, it's better to just work wirelessly. And yeah, there you go. Works perfectly. I think the next step for me is trying to get like um, Chromecast or something else where you can stream media on. Um, I know I've got an HDMI cable here, but that's the next little project. Um, but thanks everyone for all of your um, tips and like all of the hints and hopefully I've brought some of these ideas all together and shown you my full uh, layout. Yeah, thanks guys.